you. Um, hi, everybody. Hi. Um, what drives me and what drives everyone here, I think, is a, a longing to fulfill your potential. And I immediately felt that when I saw the internet. So um, I'm a little distracted. Um, I just saw the internet as a young child and then later in art school and I thought, I can speak directly to my audience and that's absolutely amazing. And so I decided not to treat the internet as a portfolio but as a place for art. So I didn't want to make sculptures and put pictures online. I said, no, the browser is my canvas and I'm going to treat it with respect. Uh, uh, wait, where's my screen? Can you mirror it? Uh, um, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I love the internet. Does anyone love the internet? Give a round of applause for the open web. Because I just feel, I, I feel like a lot of artists use it for self-promotion, but I think if you would show Leonardo da Vinci, there's a magical box that you can convert your thoughts somehow and communicate them to a potential audience of billions, really, and that's growing, um, I think he would be very interested. I'm sorry, we're waiting for the technology, so that's very ironic with it. Okay. Um, Um, maybe I should just, so we'll just look at these works. This is one of my works. And so the idea is that each work is in a domain name, access, accessible to anyone in the world. So the title of the work is uh, the location of the work. Oh. Is it on the screen? No. Nicht gut. Um, okay. Um, uh, boo. <laughs> we tested it before. Um, okay, I, I'll, I'll visualize a website. Let's do that. So one of the pieces I'm very... I love it when I make websites that... Uh, one of my websites is called nosquito.biz. It's a completely black website, and you have your cursor, of course, and when you move the cursor, you hear the sound of a mosquito, and that's the website. I like really simple ideas. So you see the cursor, and it goes, etc. And the cursor looks like a mosquito, so I may, and that's what I love about the internet. You can put really strange, silly ideas, and no one is telling you not to do it, and they find a place. And the curator asked me to do a show and to somehow think of a way of converting such ideas to the real space. And the space is about this big, completely black, completely dark. And I said, only one visitor is allowed in at the same time. Um, and when the visitor walks, you hear the sound of a mosquito. And when the visitor stops, it's silent. And I told the idea to the curator, and he looked at me, and he said, you're kidding me, right? Because he wanted a big show with a lot of works and very visual spectacle. I said, no, this will be better. And the problem was there were budget cuts, so he really had to explain to the city. Uh, yeah? OK. Here we are. Um, wait, let me start. So this is the idea with treating the website as a work of art. So this is a privately owned website uh, by a collector, but it's accessible to anyone in the world on any device. It's an infinite kiss, it keeps changing. 
And so the internet has specific properties. You treat it in a specific way and really narrow down ideas. Um, another example is I try to condense emotions into single. But the problem then is in the, we're used to uh, being on the internet, we see the work and we forget about the device. But when we go to the exhibition space, all of a sudden a computer is an object. It's, you're no longer in that dream area when you're at home and you forget about where you are. So this is an example in Korea where we showed... My point is that the internet is not just on your device, it can be huge. So this was a show in Korea. This is the biggest screen in Asia. It's 23 stories high. And they only show art. It's called Seoul Art Square. And uh, thank you. Um, so there's thousands of LEDs on the building, and they have an art program, and they show my work for a month. And it was always my intention. A website should be like gas. It should fill up potential space. So it, should, it can work on a smartwatch but it can also work on the scale of a city, or it could work on the moon, uh, and it's available to anyone. That's absolutely important to me. My vision, if you think about a big dream, is that many, many artists will create works for the internet, and in the future, anyone on the planet can look at the Mona Lisa in their home. There's no original, but it'll be privately owned, but accessible to the public. Um, Another example, this, I love simple ideas, and I think anyone on the internet does. So this is brokenself.com. So it's kind of fun, you're, just, you're breaking your screen. Uh, that's it. Um, I really love not explaining, I just say, uh, that's it. Um, and then again, a curator asked me, we should do something with this. Not specifically this work, but we can project it. But can we think about it in another way? So I thought, let's make it more physical and low tech. So I think all my work is about what I really care about is the intensif intensification of perception, because the world is so much. And then I want to bring things to a focus, which gives me a sense of calm and peace, which this might not look very peaceful, but I like really isolating an idea. And then uh, later on, this was copied by a charity to encourage recycling. So people throwing the glass, I thought that was nice. But uh, I like this transition of the screen being, we accept it as a reality, and then the gallery, it's another reality. The gallery was very smelly afterwards, because we just went to a lot of restaurants and picked up half-empty bottles, and it smelled like a really, like that smell after a party, but a huge party. It's like lots of bottles, because it, it was on for a month, so you can imagine. So my early work was very figurative, and I was interested in the depiction, uh, interactive depiction. So what does it mean when you depict something interactively, which we're used to from video games? Um, isolating on perception. But now it's moved in a more abstract direction because I feel like I want to reflect on what we're doing. We're touching the screen. We have a relationship with it. The viewer is in the pictorial space, which is new. And I just love this virgin territory where um, I feel there's not a lot of history, and I feel very free there. So this is an example. Uh, I think a bit in the tradition of Solovit, where you think mathematically, how can you divide a space? So uh, simple rules. Uh, there's lines that are cutting the screen in angles, and you see that they're divided. Uh, it's suggested, and inside each section, there's a movement as well. And when you move left and right, the content of those areas start moving. If you move up and down, the lines start moving. And 
This is again meditative because we always click to open a folder. We always click to do something, but I want to click for the sake of clicking. And so every time you click, there's a new composition. And here's another example. Just really simple rules. You start with a screen. We all know the screen. And what's unique about the web is that each screen is different. So you have to think about composition in a different way. Because painters are used to, I'll make, a black, I'll make a square painting, I'll make a portrait or a landscape. But on the internet, you don't know. So the screen might be, someone could look at it on their phone, and it's like this. So this is how you start, with some color. And then you set a point, and the screen is divided in four sections. And you set another point. And so you are, it's a dialogue between me and you, because I'm making a set of rules, and you can play within those rules. So it's, it's always been about the presence of the user and the influence of the user on the image. And then the ground idea, I'm very interested. I'm sure some scientists here will find out how some people have a talent for words. Some people have a talent for business. Some people have a talent for songs. I always come up with moving images, either interactive or moving. But it's always, so I always struggled with the still image. And, um, for that reason, I always said, a moving image is never an object. Uh, we cannot hold a movie or a music video in our hands. You might hold a USB stick, but that's not the movie. That's not the moving image. You can hold a painting in your hand, but you, you just can't hold a moving image in your hand. Um, but I had a show, and they wanted to do a lenticular postcard, which are those postcards you might remember with a, a girl in a bikini, and you move it around, and her bikini comes off. Um, that's kind of a moving image you can hold, and it doesn't use any electricity. So I thought, that's exciting. We made some tests. And the medium of lenticular is kind of a, it's clumsy. So you want to animate. You want to move things left and right. But you see the frames. It's kind of. And I wanted to use that clumsiness, uh, in a, uh, that the transitions are actually the work. And that's what I did in my latest exhibition, jumping into the physical thinking about color in a fundamental way, uh, but in an interactive way and a moving way. So it's not moving yet. But, uh. So you see, as you change your position, you're changing. There's several layers, but there's an infinite amount of areas between them. So it's really the amount of compositions in each work is infinite. Uh, someone explained to me the science of it, and I understand it on a basic level, but I tried to explain it to people. They said, how does it work? And now I finally just say it's magic. <laughs> That's the best way, because uh, I, I understand it kind of, but it's, it gets really complicated. Um, yeah, I think I wanted to start with this photo, because I just love the internet. That's why I got it tattooed on the inside of my lips. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's here. So I just want to give a big round of applause for the internet. Thank you.